I say to our allies in the DUP? Thank you for your courageous and principled stance. And I hope you agree that it is absolutely vital that we keep this partnership going and we keep this confidence and supply arrangement going and that we are not so complacent as to abandon the government of this country to a man whose avowed policy is to break up this country. And so we should work together to ensure that the whole UK, Northern Ireland included, can seize the opportunities of Brexit. Uh, uh, we, are, we, are on, we are on the verge, we are on the verge of making, we are on the verge of making a historic mistake. And I just say this, unless we change course, we are going to stay in the customs union, we're going to stay in the single market, and we're going to be rules takers. And unless we junk this backstop, we are going to find that Brussels has got us exactly where they want us. A satellite, a satellite state. We will, we will continue to accept the terms under which they have a surplus in, in trading goods with us of £95 billion, pounds, but with no power no British influence on those terms. And so we won't be able to do any trade deals of any significance or any value, because what they've done in Brussels is a very, very clever trick. They've made Northern Ireland their indispensable bargaining chip in the future negotiations. And if you read, have you, have you who's read the withdrawal agreement? I have, unlike a certain Labour leader that I can mention. Uh, if you read the withdrawal agreement, you can see that we're actually witnessing the birth of a new country called UK brackets NI, or UCNI. <laughs> read it, seriously. This is how Brussels sees it. UCNI is no longer exclusively ruled by London or Stormont. UCNI is in large part to be ruled by Brussels, and UCNI will have to accept large swathes of, UK, uh, of, of EU regulations. I wish I was going to accept UK regulations. EU regulations now and in the future. On the whole range of, of, of Brussels policy making, the lawnmower noise, the labelling of sardines, on the use of chocolate coins and tokens that may be deemed to resemble a euro, <laughs> on the use I kid you not, check it out, on the use of personal recreational watercraft. Now, of course, nowhere has a more illustrious history than Northern Ireland when it comes to the building of recreational watercraft. <laughs> the Titanic springs to mind. And now is the time to point out the iceberg ahead. <laughs> because these obligations won't just apply to current EU regulations, but to anything Brussels devises in the future.